The July morning was extremely quiet, there wasn't even a cloud in the blue sky. Seizing the opportunity, the star called the sun was already warming the streets. The luminary was not going to dwell on the result. The thermometer climbed higher and higher. An hour or two and it would be terrifying to leave the house because of the heat and suffocation of the urban jungle. At such times, cafes and restaurants were in great demand among city dwellers, inside there was always semi-darkness and a pleasant coolness. One of these was the cafe, Cozy Corner. The locals loved it for its simple and tasty menu and the friendliness of the staff. There was now a distinct aroma of coffee beans and fresh pastries wafting from the place, which had just been placed on the glass display cases. Students and office workers flocked to the cafe like moths to a flame. They'd grab paper cups of drinks, craft bags of puff pastries, and hurry off to their jobs, to chew the granite of science, conquer the professional ladder or simply live until Friday. And just like that, three people, a man, a woman and a child, also came to the heady aromas for breakfast. Although usually Larissa and her son Nicholas would settle for a homemade breakfast, they settled for oatmeal with berries, or omelet with tomatoes. At worst, if mother and son managed to oversleep, they'd settle for a sausage sandwich, so the two would have breakfast on the run. Today, however, Larissa's fiancé, named Oleg, stayed in their home. He was a solid man, he looked at boiled sausages from the supermarket like poison, he claimed it contained no meat from the word go, so he politely declined breakfast in the pop-off house and invited the family to a cafe. What the man didn't expect, however, was that Larissa would take him to a place that was in a back alley a stone's throw from her house. In summer, beige umbrellas were set up in the square in front of the cafe. Rattan tables and chairs hid under them like mushroom caps. It got noisy here in the evenings, but in the morning hours, the summer porch was almost empty. Only one table was occupied by a couple trying to stay awake over plates of cookies. Let's sit over there in the corner. Next to the flowers, Larissa suggested to Oleg and led her son by the hand in the direction indicated. The man followed her sullenly. It was obvious he didn't like the idea. What kind of place is this? Oleg asked, following the woman and the child. At the same time, he looked at the sign with the inscription, the cozy corner with such suspicion as if he suspected something. For example, in the fact that this little corner is not comfortable, but only pretends to be so. But the woman didn't hear the displeasure in his voice, so she replied happily, Oh, it's lovely here, Larissa said firmly, helping her son to sit down on a high wicker chair. My father used to take me here when he took me home from kindergarten. It was behind those houses, an old German building. Larissa waved her hand to the left and then continued, in those days there weren't many summer cafes, so the umbrellas here were a real novelty. My father would order a big glass of beer for himself, and I would get a bowl of ice cream. I still remember the aroma. Three scoops of strawberry, vanilla and chocolate. I guess it wasn't stored properly, but inside the ice cream I always found thin pieces of ice flakes. I loved them. When we got home, late for dinner, my mother was already greeting us, in the sugar bowl posture, what kind of posture is that? Frowned the businessman, sugar bowl, laughed Larissa. She stood in front of Oleg and put her arms at her sides, clearly showing him her mother's aggressive posture, there you go. She began to grumble, saying that dad was serving beer again, but he smiled broadly and pulled out a box of cookies. He used to buy them at the restaurant, little eclairs with cottage cheese filling. My mother immediately blushed and calmed down. She had a terrible sweet tooth. Oleg pushed the chair away, helping Larissa to sit down at the table. The smile on the woman's face was replaced by sadness. Her face became like that when she remembered her parents. The fact is that the happiness of the little Papa family was cut short one winter day. An accident took her parents' lives. Larissa, who was in the car behind the driver's seat, miraculously survived. There was no one to take the girl, so from the hospital she lost and grieving, was sent to an orphanage outside the city. After coming of age, Larissa returned to her hometown and her parents' apartment for the first time in many years, you know, I even managed to work here, Larissa remarked. She looked thoughtfully at the cafe windows, it seemed that she was not even addressing her companion, but the building that was watching her in silence, yeah? The man asked, without much enthusiasm, 
Larissa didn't see him pull a few napkins out of the dispenser and grumpily wipe the already clean table and then his own chair. She nodded, resting her fist on her chin. When I went to school, I needed a part-time job, because I couldn't rely on my allowance and scholarship. The cafe is close to home, so it was the best option, Larissa told her fiancé. At first I got a job here for a summer, after the first session I was a waitress, but in September, a job as an administrator became available. I was offered the job and I couldn't refuse, because I already liked the staff and the work itself. Only locals came here, and all the faces were familiar to me, so I stayed here for three years. I can say that my career started with this cozy little corner. Yes, I've had many glorious moments within these walls. Larissa's eyes suddenly welled up with tears. She blinked, surprised by her sentimentality. No, Larissa had once been a very sensitive person, but life had hardened her. Now, the woman was no longer crying over the ending of Titanic, but was genuinely outraged and asking a reasonable question. Why didn't the shameless rich girl Rosa move and allow handsome Jack to sleep with her on the same board? They could have warmed each other up and survived together. Well, or at least try to. From a dreamy, romantic girl, Larissa has transformed into a career woman who clearly understands what she wants out of life. The final blow of destiny was that Larissa became a single mother. No, little Nicholas was not a mistake. She loved her son madly. However, the way his neglectful father treated the woman forced her to close herself off from fairy tales once and for all. At the time, Larissa was in her fifth year of college. She met a prince in a shiny car, the money boy charmed her, promised her love and loyalty, and after a few nights, Larissa found out she wasn't his only girlfriend. When the student found out she was pregnant, the rich man, who had been her first husband, flew into a rage. He screamed that he had no idea who Larissa had slept with besides him. The climax was that the rich man, like the hero of a cheap melodrama, pulled out a few bills from his wallet and threw them in front of the stunned and pale Larissa. You'll get rid of him yourself. I'm not going to hold your hand, he said angrily. The girl didn't take that money. It was disgusting. Although then, he was ashamed to say it, he regretted showing pride. Turns out carrying a child under your heart isn't cheap. Of course, Larissa didn't get rid of her son. She faced all difficulties, even managed to finish university. By the time she passed her exams and defended her degree, she already had a big belly. So the teachers didn't bother the student too much, for fear that she would give birth in the classroom out of excitement. It was hard at first. The young mother was not hired, citing lack of experience and her newborn son, who, according to potential employers, had to be sick all the time. Larissa struggled with part-time jobs, trying, like an unskilled juggler, to combine childcare and other pleasures of adult life. Sometimes her paycheck would be late, or she'd be cheated out of it completely, then have to choose between buying groceries and paying utility bills. Then it got easier. Larissa miraculously got a job at a good hotel as a maid. In the summer they had the hotel so full, they hired almost anyone. Larissa worked double shifts, sometimes even at night. Sometimes she left her little boy with her neighbor, Aunt Lydia. She was a good woman, a friend of her deceased mother. She was happy to help Larissa. Of course, Larissa was not in debt. When she received her salary, she bought gifts and food for her neighbor, because she didn't take any money. Three years later, Larissa was promoted to head housekeeper for her good service. The girl missed the generous tips from guests, but she didn't miss cleaning toilets and the strong chemical smell that stung her eyes. Later, Larissa became a receptionist, helped by her higher education and knowledge of English. Before long, Larissa began to take on additional responsibilities, and with them the money came to her. She no longer saved every penny, but took the liberty of raising money for an old dream. Nicholas by then, had long since entered kindergarten. She grew up a wonderful child. The boy was gentle, obedient, intelligent beyond his years. The teachers praised him over and over again. They told Larissa that he always stood up for the weak, even though Nicholas himself didn't like to fight, but if someone near him offended him, he would enter the fray without a second thought. The little boy loved it when his mother, before going to bed, read him not ordinary fairy tales, but of course, about knights, or noble ship captains. 
From these stories he learned good manners and courage. Thus all the neighbors were amused and surprised when the boy opened the door in front of them and did not forget to bow. Ladies forward, said Nicholas with importance, making everyone, from girls to old ladies, blush and giggle. The boy shook hands with men when they met. He particularly liked shaking hands with Uncle Anatole. He was a local plumber who rode around their neighborhood on his bicycle, but when he saw Nicholas, he always stopped to talk to the boy, How's your life, Nicholas? The man shook his little friend's hand, Thank you, everything is fine, he nodded. When Nicholas turned four, the Popo's life changed. Larissa met Oleg. He visited the hotel where she worked. The company where the businessman worked was holding a business meeting there, having rented one of the conference rooms. Partners and sponsors of their company, who had traveled to the city, were also going to stay in the hotel rooms. Larissa was on shift that day, so she was the one who helped organize the event and accommodate the guests. Later, Oleg told the woman that he fell in love with her at first sight. However, he lied to her. At first, the man didn't notice Larissa, and where there, he was busy looking into the mouths of sponsors. It was from the mouth of a German that a comment in the direction of a beautiful woman came out. Only then did Oleg look at Larissa differently. Larissa was indeed a beauty. She had braided her long, light blonde hair into an intricate hairstyle that highlighted her beautiful face. Her lips were fleshy, so beautifully colored, as if she had recently eaten ripe berries. Her eyes were sky blue, and her lashes were dark and curved. In the stewardess's throat was a silver heart-shaped pendant that gleamed drawing attention to her long, slender neck. The friendly smile never left Larissa's lips. From the outside she looked as if she wasn't walking, but floating above the ground, moving smoothly and comfortably. When Oleg heard how many compliments the hotel employee had heaped on her, he wanted to hold her for himself, as if it were a valuable and coveted trophy. At first, the man thought it would be just another affair, but Larissa lured him into her net, falling more and more in love with him herself. The fact is that the woman flatly refused the rich businessman's courtship. She decided at university that the rich were not for her. However, all these sincere and ingenious negative responses of hers, the man perceived them as a clever flirtation, damn, she's playing with me, mentally thought Oleg, receiving another refusal. In the end, the man himself didn't realize how he turned from a hunter into a victim. Larissa twisted his mind with her simplicity and lack of interest in the rich knight. And even the fact that she raised her son alone did little to embarrass the businessman. On the contrary, he clung to the presence of a child like a drowning man clutching at straws. Larissa, my soul, let me be part of your family. I'm sure your son will like me and I'll replace his father, sings the man, escorting his beloved home again. Think to yourself, the boy needs a father. A manly hand, so to speak. We'd play with him, I don't know, football for example. Larissa, holding back her laughter, looks at her suitor's polished shoes and shakes her head, have you been playing football for long? I can't imagine you in sneakers. Oleg puffed himself up, sticking out his chest, I was even on the school team when I studied in England. They love it there, he said. By the way, football was invented by gentlemen like me. In general, Oleg did not give up. He brought presents to Larissa, as well as gave presents to her son. Colleagues envied Larissa with goodwill, and sometimes even twiddled their thumbs, you Larissa are a fool. Why do you twist your nose? Indignantly said Elisa, the red-haired one, especially for a woman with a trailer. Or are you trying to set your price? Make sure they don't bother knocking on hotel doors. Then you'll be left with a broken-down trough. Larissa, even though she was offended that her wonderful son was called a trailer, understood that her colleague wanted nothing but happiness for her. Before long, Larissa, unable to resist such an assault, gave in. She and Oleg began dating. At first, the woman didn't trust the man, expecting a trick. However, her first sentimental experience left a scar on her heart. However, Oleg apparently wasn't going to turn into someone else. He remained himself. But here's where a nuance comes in, Larissa and Oleg were completely different. And now the man, accustomed to luxury and servitude, looked around with antipathy, nostalgia, is of course, delightful. But are you sure you don't want to eat in a more, ah, uh, more decent? 
I'm not sure I know about the sanitary rules. Larissa also looked around in surprise. Perhaps something had changed in the time since she had left her position as manager of this place. But no, everything had remained the same, except for the new chairs and tables. I don't see anything obscene here. The woman turned her neck provocatively to look inside, then shrugged. No, I really don't. There's not even a waitress dancing on the bar in jean shorts and plaid shirts, in the best tradition of some crazy daisy bar. She tried to neutralize the situation with a joke, but her cheerful smile flew into the milk. Oleg didn't like it here. He didn't like the violets that adorned the fence, because bees and other critters flew over them. He didn't like that the chair creaked beneath him. He didn't like the fact that the table was a bit rickety and had a mark on its surface from someone else's glass that couldn't be wiped off with a napkin. Nevertheless, she sat humbly in front of Larissa and accepted the menu from the waitress. After polishing off the pages with the list of dishes, Oleg regretted refusing the oatmeal. At least they were in the spirit of English aristocracy. Not for nothing did Sherlock Holmes eat them. However, to back down, Oleg dared not, resolving to resist the blows of fate firmly. Even so treacherous, as the waitress's statement, who took the order, you'll have to wait a little, we have a small accident in the kitchen, whispered the girl. I'll bring the drinks right away, but the hot dishes will be late. I can only offer a replacement, in the form of pastries, it's okay, we're in no hurry, Larissa smiled. She was telling the truth. Today she had a day off, she didn't take Nicholas to kindergarten, and Oleg didn't have to leave for a business meeting until after lunch. Nevertheless, the businessman still couldn't contain a snort, yeah, what a service, he said, looking disgruntled at the students coming out of the cafe, munching on buns as they left, never mind. Today is a wonderful day, replied Larissa smiling. Oleg looked at her involuntarily. After all, the smile was Larissa's main jewel, as was her naturalness. The man was astonished to learn that the woman had never been to a beauty salon. At first she was cut at the orphanage, like all the other girls, like a template. Then she had no money or time for such places. Oleg himself was not a very handsome man, but he wanted to correct such an eyesore, in his opinion, a mistake of mother nature. Therefore, he was well groomed. Even the businessman's nails and eyebrows were groomed in a beauty salon. Larissa suspected that Oleg not only plucked his eyebrows, but also removed his chest hair with lasers, but this subject preferred not to raise it. Only Oleg didn't shy away from talking to Larissa on the subject of beauty and self-care. And now, distracted from the lines on the menu, he looked carefully at Larissa's hands. The woman had just poured antiseptic on her son's hands, because on the way the child had already managed to pet the cat in the yard, my son, the man called out to Larissa. You didn't use my gift? I gave you a certificate to a wonderful beauty salon. There you could have your hair removed from your arms. Larissa looked surprised first at Oleg and then at his hands. The hair there was quite light, like fluff. Why would I do that? She frowned, offended by the remark. Sensing the displeasure in his girlfriend's tone, the businessman leaned back in his chair and waved his hand. I don't insist. I just know it's a popular service these days. Beauty parlors make sphinx cats out of girls, mom, do you want to become a cat? I love cats, but I wouldn't want, Nicholas stiffened, looking at the milkshake they had already brought him. No dear, Larissa hurried to reassure her son, then gave her companion another disgruntled look, and if someone likes bald cats that can be trained, let them get one. Oleg puffed and rolled his eyes. Frankly, he didn't understand why his good deeds were being bayoneted. Well, Yes, he wished Larissa would wear heels next to him more often. She replied that she was tired of shoes at work, and was more comfortable in sneakers for running around the parks with her son. He wanted Larissa and her son to move in with him, but she stubbornly refused. The man was forced to sleep in their apartment, which lacked his usual amenities. And what, you might say, is wrong with the fact that he wants his partner's hands to be smooth. After all, it's normal in the modern world. Larissa doesn't have to grow wool to survive the cold in a cave. Unfortunately, such trifles and different views on life ruin their relationship. Oleg, who grew up in a wealthy family and studied abroad, tried to be a gentleman. Sometimes he even called Nicholas, Nicholas, in the French manner. Larissa, 
who grew up in an orphanage and tasted the pleasures of quarreling over toys and sweets, had a much simpler attitude to life. If she was funny, she laughed loudly, though Oleg thought this rude and uncultured. Larissa, for example, couldn't get over the injustice. She once ruined a meeting because she ran off to deal with a man who yelled at her companion and even wanted to hit her. Oleg understood that the man in question wasn't right, but to interfere in other people's relationships he considered unacceptable. Therefore, he took his eyes off the scene of someone else's quarrel. However, Larissa rushed belligerently to the young woman's defense. And she always did. Larissa also valued natural comfort more than outward adornment. A trivial example, this winter Oleg and Larissa chose a new duvet. They got into a fight in the store not for life, but for death. Because Oleg was going to buy an expensive, beautiful duvet that didn't warm at all. Larissa wanted to buy a regular, squared one that didn't match her sofa, but was soft and warm. Larissa won this fight, but there had been many such fights between Oleg and Larissa. And one was about to take place right now. Here's your breakfast. Thank you so much for waiting. Sorry about that, smiled the young waitress in a white apron. Larissa smiled, thinking that the appearance of the uniform hadn't changed over the years, no problem. Waiting only increased our appetite. Right, gentlemen? Larissa asked, picking up her knife and fork. Nicholas nodded, but Oleg just snorted. He looked disgruntled at the omelet, beans and toast, expecting to find a compliment from the chef in the form of hair, bon appétit. The waitress sang, walking away from the table. Before Larissa began to eat, she started to help her son. Although Nicholas was an independent boy, but at five years old he tried not to trust her with a knife. As soon as the woman cut up her son's breakfast, something caught her eye. He raised his head and froze. A homeless man was walking along the road near the cafe. Larissa had already seen him a few times, and had even given him an alms. He was friendly and smiled warmly, getting help from passers-by. Once, Larissa saw him helping the janitors clear snow and ice from the streets. The man seemed kind. But now something was wrong. The homeless man wasn't just walking, he was staggering. It was obvious that he wasn't drunk, but simply feeling sick. It wasn't clear whether it was because of heat, illness or hunger. But the man's face, covered by a gray beard, was pale, and there was sweat on his forehead. He tried to take another step, but his body wouldn't listen. The man swayed and leaned against the fence. He looked up and saw an empty table in the cafe near the entrance. Breathing heavily, the homeless man moved to the table and sat down on a chair, sighing. It was obvious how relieved the man was by the saving shade and respite. The poor man, he broke off from the woman's lips, something must have happened to him, what do you mean? Oleg didn't hear his fiancée, but noticing where she was looking, he turned away. The businessman's mouth opened so that his jaw almost hit the floor. A moment later, the shock of astonishment was replaced by displeasure then anger. The man's jaw snapped into place, clattering like a noose. He furrowed his dark eyebrows, and his lips curled into a tight, curt frown, don't worry, my son. Enjoy your breakfast if you can. I'll take care of everything, he declared. In front of Larissa, the man stood up and shouted loudly, waiter, come here. The girl ran quickly out of the darkness of the room, frightened by the tone of the guest. She looked at the plate and then at the man, yes, what's wrong? Send this bum away at once, demanded Oleg indignantly, nodding towards the table in the distance. Do you at least look who is entering your place? This is not normal. The waitress looked around in confusion, only now noticing the man trying to nestle quietly on a chair. The girl hesitated for a moment, and Larissa, not expecting such a turn of events, jumped up from her chair, Oleg, why are you doing this? Sit down immediately, she whispered, afraid that the poor homeless man would hear her, and what's this? The businessman frowned, you feel sorry for him. Actually, homeless people have their own food outlets, as well as all sorts of homes, so let him go there. Does it seem normal to you that this homeless guy, maybe even an addict, sits in his dirty clothes at the table, and your son, for example, sits here? Would you want that? Larissa looked at the poor man again. It was obvious that he was drawing a breath. Now the woman could examine him better. And no, he wasn't a dirty tramp, as her companion had claimed. 
Yes, the clothes were clearly off someone else's shoulder. In some places, gaps were visible. Still, it was obvious that the man was trying to remain neat and clean even in his deplorable state. His hands were clean and calloused, his hair and face washed. Moreover, Larissa's heart clenched in her chest for some reason. No, not just out of pity for the man's fate. For a moment it seemed to her that he looked very much like her father. He had the same beard and the same big hands. He used to sit with a glass of lager. The woman didn't have time to answer Oleg, because her son got up from his chair. Nicholas looked at the potential stepfather with displeasure from the side, I know him, the boy muttered resentfully, he's Uncle Paul, he's very nice. When my bicycle chain broke, he fixed it for me, and he knows a lot of interesting stories, and he also helped me get a cat out of a tree, and he gave Dennis a real slingshot, he'll make me one too. Having made this statement, the boy picked up his plate and confidently walked towards the table in the distance. The homeless man looked at him in surprise, then his face brightened when he recognized the boy. Nicholas, said the man slowly, though his breathing was still heavy. What a nice meeting, young man. Nikolai, placing his plate in front of the man, nodded to him, Hello, are you feeling ill? Yes, the heat has exhausted me, nodded the old man and my blood pressure is giving me trouble. Are you hungry? asked Nicholas in his own way. Help yourself. I'll ask my mother to buy you some more water, will you? I've already had my cocktail. The man was confused, he tried to refuse the pampering, blushing, but his eyes kept falling on the tempting portion of food. Well, Larissa murmured, looking at the way her son sat next to the homeless man, persuading him to eat. There's the answer to your question. My child is already sitting at the same table as a homeless man. What do you think, Oleg? It's unacceptable to you, isn't it? Like the rest of our lives. She turned to her partner, looking at him belligerently. The man took a deep breath, catching more air in his smooth, hairless chest. I'll say, that yes, it's unacceptable. What kind of mother are you, if you allow such a friendship? You don't even know what ideas that bum can have in his head you'll cry later, and I'll tell you that such lost people have no place in normal society. They chose this life for themselves, all by themselves. Larissa's lips were trembling, you know, Oleg. My son learned manners from books, not in an English public school. However, God willing, he will become a better man than you. His heart is certainly bigger. She took a glass of water in which ice cubes were melting. The woman intended to sit down at the table with her son and the homeless man, but she was horrified when Oleg, unexpectedly strong and tenacious, grabbed her elbow, squeezing her sensitive skin with his fingers. If you leave now, if you trade me in for some stinking old man, I'll, he hissed angrily. You what? Larissa wrenched her hand from his grip. Are you going to take my waxing certificate? Well, somehow I'm going to survive this loss. Oleg gritted his teeth then exhaled with a bated breath, I wanted to propose to you Larissa, do you realize what a mistake you're making? I've tolerated your tantrums and whims for a long time, but there's no limit to it now, you're simply embarrassing me, you know that I would refuse to become your wife anyway, Larissa was furious, we have different paths to follow, Oleg, you need a docile and obedient animal, and I don't meet your requirements, Larissa tried again to leave, but Oleg turned her elegantly away, but this gesture was fatal to himself. Water and ice splashed on his expensive shirt. Damn it, what the hell are you doing? He shouted, jumping up and down and shivering with cold. Larissa didn't retort that she had nothing to do with it. She just shook her head and remarked, I think this is a sign that you should calm down. Goodbye, Oleg. Sorry about what happened, she said and went to her son. Oleg looked at his fiance smiling at the homeless bastard. He watched silently as she called the smiling waitress, and she nodded, promising to bring this homeless man a drink of water. Oleg stood, feeling the cold water trickle down on him. Then he threw the bill on the table, paying for the damn breakfast, and left the terrace without turning back. He was determined to get Larissa out of his life, once and for all. The woman looked after Oleg, feeling a subtle sting in the area of his ribs. She always thought this was how it would end. The woman simply didn't believe that a fairy tale happy ending awaited her, and she and Oleg were like heaven and earth.
This incident simply became the last straw, only the woman still felt pain, she had managed to get attached to Oleg, just like that, and no, it wasn't because of his generosity or his gifts, which he brought her almost every day, it was simply that Oleg was funny, in his thoughtful, slightly clumsy way, about everyday life, how much effort it took him to cook pasta for dinner, it was funny, but Oleg was a nice guy, good only for her, for a moment, it even seemed to Larissa that he might really love her, but she refused to believe it, after all, they were people from different worlds, mother, did you hear that? Larissa was brought out of her sad thoughts by her son's voice, Uncle Paul is a builder by trade, what kind of builder am I now? The man waved his hand, the water, the breakfast and the kindness of the people filled the man with incredible strength, she literally blossomed before their eyes, looking at her mother and son with gratitude, Larissa tried to forget about the argument with her fiancé and joined the conversation, so you built houses, and what happened? The man sighed, life happened, it's embarrassing to tell, my daughter, I came here to earn money, I built private houses, I needed the money, my wife was very sick, God rest her soul, so I told my son to take care of her, and I went to get money, I sent every penny I earned for my dear wife's treatment, but I ran into trouble, my clients cheated me out of my money and beat me badly when I demanded payment, they also took my papers and threw them away, I woke up in hospital, rushed to the police, but they told me to keep quiet if my life is important, I don't know for whom I was building a house there, for the daughter of an important but unscrupulous man, the man became sullen, clutched his napkin with his fingers, then continued, I wanted to go home, but I wasn't expected there, I called my son, but I almost had a heart attack, honestly, it turned out that my wife had long since gone to the other side, and my son and daughter-in-law had taken my apartment, before she died, they told my nana to sign everything over to them, they didn't even invite me to the funeral, you know, they kept asking me for money and they took everything, I don't know if my nada was in the hospital or if her son and daughter-in-law drove her to the grave themselves, to this day I regret leaving, Nada wouldn't let me go, she said I had to stay, and I went for the big money, and in the end I lost everything, including the meaning of this life, nothing sweet to me, you know, I've got nothing left, so I walk around like a stranger, Larissa wiped away the tears she couldn't hold back, she felt so sorry for the good old man, and she wanted to help him with something more than a glass of water and a cold meal, then the woman let out a sigh and straightened up abruptly, we need a builder, she exclaimed, but then she calmed down a little, but I can't pay you much yet, you can live on our land instead, what are you talking about, daughter, uncle Paul is interested, we have a little house in the country, it's very old and small, but it's habitable, I dreamed of renovating it so I could spend summers there with my son, I used to go there occasionally with my mother and father when I was still little, there is a river nearby and the forest is full of blueberries, Larissa shared her childhood memories with pleasure, I didn't have enough money to do it, but I saved from every salary and bonus, I believe God sent you to me, Larissa and Paul discussed her idea, it was obvious that the man was a little excited, he was really enjoying the company of this lovely woman and her wonderful and extraordinary son, already the following weekend, Larissa took her vacation, mother, son and uncle Paul came to the cottage, the man warmly got down to work, good thing his hands remembered what building was all about, Nikolai tried to help uncle Paul, the man gave the child not very hard tasks, he often praised his assistant, after a few days of work, the three of them sat down to lunch, Uncle Paul regaled everyone with interesting stories and histories, without being noticed, Paul became a member of the family, he reminded Larissa more and more of her father, a month passed, one day, Larissa and Nicholas came to the country for the weekend, the house was already relatively comfortable to live in, but Paul didn't stop there, he was building a modern addition and at the same time improving the land, the man was planning to install a pergola and a swing, in the morning, the woman woke up and heard men's voices and hammering, she was surprised, had uncle Paul found friends among the locals, the woman thought, looking out of the window, what she found in the backyard was a real shock to Larissa, Oleg himself was standing there, hammering nails into beams, uncle Paul was standing over him, giving instructions, 
who works like that with a hammer. You'll hammer your fingers into the nails. No, not like that. Yes, here it is. The frowning and serious businessman, flushed with effort, puffed and tried to obey the master. Larissa was surprised to find that Oleg had even abandoned his invariable suit and soft leather shoes. He stood barefoot in the grass, his pants rolled up and his torso bare, and in this way he seemed to the woman much more beautiful than before. Larissa's heart went like a bird. It was only now that she let go of her feelings and realized that she really missed Oleg. Even their arguments. She jumped into the courtyard and rushed to the man. Uncle Pavel, coughing tactfully, stepped aside. Oleg wiped his forehead with the back of his hand, looked frowningly at Larissa. Well, hello, he muttered. Larissa tried to suppress a cheerful smile, but to no avail, what are you doing here? I'm building a gazebo for you, said the businessman, nodding towards the wood with slight confusion. Well, so says Paul, that this will eventually make a gazebo. I don't think so, of course. Why are you making me a gazebo? Larissa asked insistently. Because I love you, Oleg murmured. If to stay with you I have to eat in places with homeless people, so be it. Larissa burst out laughing. Oleg didn't even get to look at his disgruntled girlfriend. The woman had already rushed to him and wrapped her arms around his neck. She kissed the man firmly on the lips. Larissa, I'm wet and dirty. Oleg tried to resist, but he hugged the woman, whom he missed dearly, tightly. It's nothing serious. I like it even more, Larissa giggled. It turned out that Oleg arrived at dawn and apologized to Paul. The man thought long and hard about what had happened and realized that his love for Larissa was above all else. Yes, perhaps they were from different worlds. However, it's not for nothing that parallel lines can intersect at an infinitely distant point. Here Oleg and Larissa have finally found this point of tangency, and they don't intend to miss it. Since then, the two have learned to understand and hear each other. Sometimes they compromised, sometimes they argued again over the color of the cushions but even in that was their happiness. Oleg became much more cordial and simple. He began to laugh louder, no longer thinking it was indecent. Larissa sometimes put on heels to please her husband. However, she never ended up getting laser hair removal. Oleg kept his promise and became a good father to Nicholas. They played football together and ate oatmeal for breakfast like two English gentlemen. Later, Oleg and Larissa had a daughter, whom the man raised like a real princess. As for Paul, he stayed in the new house, which he built with Oleg and Nicholas. And even though the people who hosted him were not related by blood, they became a true and loving family to him. Dear all, thank you very much for your attention, and if you enjoyed the story, then please feel free to support me with a like and post your thoughts in the comments. Have a wonderful evening and a peaceful night to all. We'll be back soon. Bye.